Nice to have you with us. A national treasure. Her TV career of 80 years spanned longer than any others. The first lady of game shows. As Sue Ann Nivens, she was icky sweet to sweet perfection. As Rose Nyland, her terminal naivete was interminably hilarious. Ageless, tireless, she was a true icon and one of the most beloved entertainers of all time. Cozy TV remembers Betty White. It happened this past Friday, the death of Betty White, the beloved comedian just two weeks shy of her 100th birthday. With Mo Rocca, we look back in laughter. By the time I got to high school, the kids had made up this really mean nickname for me just because I had hairy legs. What'd they call you? Rose with the hairy legs. <laughs> as long as there's been TV, Betty White's been on it. As she told Katie Couric. If you have one good series, you, you know, it's a blessing. Two good series is unusual. Three is, where do you get privileges like that? I taste it every minute. That's why you're always avoiding me. Because you know if you get too close, you're afraid the little pilot light of desire that flickers within you might turn your whole oven on. <laughs> Beginning in 1973, White portrayed happy homemaker slash man-eater Sue Ann Nivens on The Mary Tyler Moore Show. She was an obvious choice because she's so gifted. She was not an obvious choice because she's antithetical to the character. James L. Brooks was the show's co-creator. Oh, my poor baby! <laughs> There's a great bit where Sue Ann pulls out a collapsed souffle and then she closes the oven <laughs> door with her knee. I just remembered it as you said it, yeah. She was inventive. I think there was less direction of her than almost anybody. She had it all. I think she could have been a tremendous dramatic actress if she wanted to. In 1985, Betty White did a 180 and played lovably dim-witted Rose Nyland on The Golden Girls. I should have said no to the Miss St. Olaf beauty pageant. <laughs> It was 1951. That was the first year they let humans enter, too. And in 2010, White co-starred with Wendy Malick in the TV Land series Hot in Cleveland. 
Canoga Falls is naming the town square after me. Wow, that's <laughs> great. Oh, did Canoga Falls lose a bed or something? I turned 60 on Hot in Cleveland when we were working together, and she was on the cusp of her 90th at the time. And I looked at her life and thought, oh my God, there's a whole other act ahead of me. White's career in television predated television itself. Months before the medium was introduced to the public at the 1939 World's Fair, 17-year-old Betty appeared on an experimental transmission in Los Angeles. Off-screen, White had two great passions in her life, including animals of all kinds. And oftentimes people would come up to her and say, oh, I want to show you a picture of my kids. And she'd say, oh, great. And when they would show them pictures of actual children, she would look so disappointed and say, oh, they're children. <laughs> She was so hoping for a little lamb. The great two-legged love of her life was her husband, Password host Alan Ludden. She was a contestant, and he, soon enough, popped the question. I said no for a year. It, I wasted a whole year of time we could have had together. I might have been a pretty good game player, but I was a dumb lady. <laughs> what were she and Alan Ludden like as a couple? Tremendously loving. Tremendously loving to towards each other. I mean, they, they, you know, they, they were precious to each other. Why, Betty White. Why, Alan Lund. Well, it's nice to see you again. Nice to see you. When I look on YouTube at the game show, you can just see them, how much they just like each other. So they can... Adored. I think adored is the word. After Ludden died, White kept on working, hosting Saturday Night Live when she was 88. something Wendy Malick credits to her unfailingly positive outlook. I remember somebody coming up to her once, I don't remember who it was, and said, you know what I hate? And she said, no, and frankly, I don't care to know. <laughs> and that was pretty much Betty. She didn't want you to dump your dark woes and worries and angst, and she just wasn't interested in that. It's like, you can always find something to be happy or grateful about, and she worked very hard at that. And that was her credo. Why is she so beloved? Betty was a deeply good person. Something of a higher quality about her um, th that I think everybody sensed. We all kidded around and piled around, but we treated her a little differently, I think. There was something special about her. I'm honored to be able to like say a few words about how truly wonderful she was, because sometimes you're asked to do these things and you have to sort of pull out the good parts and leave the rest <laughs> But Betty, there's no, there's no leaving the rest behind. It's all good. White worried that people were sick of seeing her on TV. She even speculated this for her gravestone. At last, she's gone. <laughs> she finally got off. <laughs> but even at 99, Betty White left us wanting more. It's not that funny. <laughs> I know. I think I better keep the lid on this paint thinner. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you about my family. Hey,
the finale of the hit series Mad Men aired seven years ago this week. For seven seasons, John Hamm played the hard-drinking, womanizing 1960s-era advertising executive Don Draper in a starring role that earned him two Golden Globe awards and an Emmy. After a steady mix of drama and comedy since then, the St. Louis native now is stepping into a childhood fantasy, playing the commanding officer to Tom Cruise's Maverick in the anticipated new sequel to Top Gun. John and I got together on a rooftop above Times Square for a Sunday sit-down. Captain Pete Maverick Mitchell, your reputation precedes him. Thank you, sir. What's the comment? 51-year-old John Hamm has quite a story to tell 15-year-old John Hamm. If my 8th grade self could talk to my now self, both of us would not be computing that this has happened. The hard deck is 5,000 feet above ground level. 5,000 feet is not just a rule, it is a law, as immutable as gravity. 36 years after the original Top Gun. Ham plays Vice Admiral Cyclone in the highly anticipated scene where he butts heads with the older, only slightly wiser, Maverick. Nothing will change without my express approval. Including the hard deck scene? Especially the hard deck, Captain. Sir. Sir. What is this? It's a request to learn the hard deck, sir. The 1986 classic took viewers on a thrilling ride inside the cockpit. So your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. With Tom Cruise back at the controls, the new Top Gun Maverick taps into that nostalgia while flying into a new era. It's a continuation of the story and of all the people that we've known, and that it's this throwback again to making you feel like you were when you were in sixth grade or eighth grade. Chevy Chase in the 1985 movie. 
I'm uh, Don Corleone, Mrs. Kavanaugh's cousin. Pam plays a new version of the investigative reporter in the upcoming film, Confess Pledge. You could uh, imitate Russia. Yeah. Well, you want to be Russia on himself? Okay. Check his jab. That version will always be in this. So we have to really kind of, when you approach it like a cover song, you have to kind of come up with your own spin on that. Pam is reunited in the movie with his Mad Men co star, John Slattery. You wanted to see me? About three weeks ago. Debuting 15 years ago this summer, the acclaimed series and that brooding character made Ham a household name. You ready for another? Or if you talk about your tank. You're leaving this dance. You've got some distance from it. Have you been able to process what a whirlwind that was well, and what an impact it had on your life? Yes, yeah, for sure. It's fun to look back on that show and, and be reminded of what a big thing we made. Land Jaguar, the world will know. We've arrived. That was 2007 when it started. The show was great, but there was no guarantee it was going to take off. The AMC, people weren't sure. We didn't know if we were going to make a second episode. So then it, then it debuted, and it was a hit. And then all of a sudden, it went for seven seasons. And that's, that's a success that very few people get to experience. And I'm eternally grateful for it. It obviously changed your career, it changed your life. It was a change, it certainly a change. In the old days, you shake hands and move on. Yeah. That's it. And now it's a, it's a picture, it's a this, it's a let's do. And of course, you don't want to be, you know, rude. Yeah. But there's also, you know, there's all, only so many minutes in a day. As you look at the sort of future and horizon of your career, what's still out there that you want to do? I've been so lucky. I just like to keep my head on the swivel and my eyes open and, and be aware Top Gun Maverick is only in theaters, no streaming, beginning this Friday, May 27th, and I have to tell you, it is awesome. Our thanks to the St. Cloud Rooftop at the Knickerbocker Hotel in Times Square for hosting our conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sunday Sit Down podcast to hear the full-length interview with John Hamm. You can find it on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get yours. And next week, we revisit a favorite Sunday sit-down with one of the brightest young stars in Hollywood, Ariana DeBose, who has cleaned up the awards this year, including an Oscar for her performance in West Side Story. Ariana DeBose, next week on Sunday Today. Let's turn now and get a quick check of your local Sunday weather. Agenda, and it's going to come back here this morning, and we will see temperatures as a result climb quickly, quickly through the 80s, lower 90s this afternoon, and watch out for showers and thunderstorms, a possibility anywhere between the hours of 3 and 6. Cold front, though, brings much different air into the region here for tomorrow, with highs only in the lower 70s, near 70 on Tuesday. Ahead on Sunday today are highs and lows of the week, including the leak at a water tower in Arkansas, unfortunate both for its impact on the town's water supply and for its location on the silhouette of Johnny Cash. But up next, our Sunday spotlight takes you inside the room where a new generation of well-funded political ads are being made, focus less on policy and more on the culture wars. We're back in just 30 seconds.